Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Tonight we have a review, and it's a review of an Amouage, basically my favorite niche house, definitely one of my favorite niche houses to discuss on this channel. And today we're going to be talking about Honor Man from 2011, perfumed by Nathalie Feisauer, uh, under the tutelage of Christopher Chong, of course. And um, I do not, excuse me, I do not own a full bottle of this. Um, but I um, have about 50 mils of samples that somebody very kindly sent me. These are all Honor Man samples, if you can see in there. Um, I have a lot of juice, let's say. So, excuse me. Um, so long story short is uh, we're going to do an Honor Man review. Sometimes when I tell you guys I have a lot of juice and I never bought a bottle because I have a ton of samples, I think some people think I'm bullshitting. So I wanted to show you all the samples. I've got a ton. I probably still have you know, 40 mils left, because I've been wearing Honor Man from samples for probably four or five years now. These are the original vintage um, samples when they came out. Uh, the samples now look different. The packaging looks different. I can't believe it's still around. Hasn't been axed yet. But uh, so we're going to do this review. But first, we have a very quick, uh, small unboxing uh, from a perfume god person who wants to remain anonymous, I believe. So, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Anonymous Perfume God Person, let us see what we have here. Um, I honestly have no clue what is in here. So we will find out. <clears throat> we will find out together. And then we will review Old Honor Man. Well, there's some stuff. Uh, there's definitely some stuff. Let us see. Uh, so here we have Penhaligon's Asiwa, 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 uh, Asiwa, Asiwa. Um, let's look this bad boy up. Ten Halligans, Uh What a strange name, Asiwa. Uh, from 2014, it's a Woody Oriental discontinued. Believe it or not. So that is a Christian Provenzano release with saffron, bergamot, absinthe, divana, rose, clove, labdanum, cardamom, car carnation, jasmine, myrrh, oud, amber, guyacwood, musk, sandalwood, vanilla, cedarwood, and patchouli. That actually sounds pretty good. Uh, I am excited to. This is part of the Trades Roots collection. Ah, I was already on my wish list, so thank you very much. Uh, let's see what else is in here. Exit the King. I um, have heard about this. Uh, exit the King, Exit the King, uh, 2020, a floral synthetic by Cecile Maton and Ralph Schwieger. Ralph Schwieger usually has like a, um, very playful style. I really, really like Lipstick Rose. I really fell in love with, with Lipstick Rose. I think it's fantastic. I think it's his best, Ralph Schwieger's best work. So Exit the King, Aldehydes, Musk, Nepalese Sichuan pepper. That is very specific. Pink pepper, rose, lily of the valley, jasmine. Orkinox, which is a ambroxan, synthetically produced ambroxan, basically. Patchouli, moss absolute, and sandalwood. Okay, awesome. Very interested in trying that one. And then we've got some Chanel, less exclusives. So what are you? What are you? You are a Chanel, um, 1932. Awesome. I can smell this from the atomizer. It smells so Chanel. Very interesting. Um, 1932, 1932. Uh, this is the OD. What are you? Which one are you? You're the Eau de Parfum. Okay. So the Eau de Parfum from 2016. Um, aldehydes, bergamot, neroli, jasmine, elaine, carnation, lilac, rose, ambret, iris, musk, apopanax, sandalwood, vetiver, aurelia, which is, um, oh wow, very old ingredient. It's an ionone. Interesting. Reminiscent of violent. Developed in 1903. Yes, that's when, I guess, uh, ionones really made their, um, entrance onto the perfume scene. Vanilla, Kumarin, and Frankincense. This, this, I'm very interested in getting to know this. This is, um, this is, this is going to be, I, I've got a feeling that's going to be very classy. Um, and then we've got this little bad boy. What are you? You are Iris Prima. 
Iris Prima. Um, and Iris Prima is... Iris Prima from 2013. Uh, Bergamot Green Amber Pink Pepper Oris Absolute Hedione Parad Paradisone. Synthetic fragrance from Fermanish, described as a floral jasmine-like fragrance, reminiscent of Paradise. Paradise, Paradise Zone. Wow. Uh, they're definitely not very good at naming. Uh, jasmine, Sambach, Leather, Sandalwood, Vetiver, Benzoin, and Vanilla. Alberto Morias. Okay, awesome. So thank you, Perfume God person, uh, whoever you are, Masked Crusader. Thank you very much for sending those along. They will get put in the never-ending to review list. Okay, so... Let's get on track for those of you who uh, are here for the Honor Man review. So as I said, just to recap, I have had these decants, these little samples, these official brand samples for probably four or five years. I've worn the hell out of this fragrance. Even though I don't own a bottle, I would probably guess I've used between 10 and 15 mils. Sometimes I'll just pick it up like I like today. This was what I was wearing today. And you can see I've about drained this decant um, or this little this sample. And I'll just grab another one if the time comes to, to wear it again. And I've been doing that for years and years and years. Someone sent me an entire, when they came, they were like wrapped. You know, like somebody worked for a place where they had a bunch of samples. And they just like sent me the whole thing wrapped. Um, like it was never even opened up. Just a ton of samples in there. Like I said, I'm guessing it was probably like 50 mils, okay? So, um, so Honor Man is a 2011 release. It was uh, created by Nathalie Feisthauer, and on the Amouage website, it basically says that this is this spicy and woody fragrance invokes memories of the past, a filial elegy to the honor and memory of, Ma of Madame Butterfly. This is a story of reconciliation. So I can't say I know the story of Madame Butterfly. There's a little bit more in-depth uh, write-up on Fragrantica, which says that uh, the perfumes are dedicated to the tragic story of Madame Butterfly, the geisha Chow Chow San who married an American and waited for his return for three years. More specifically, the inspiration for the new creations was drawn from the last act of the eponymous opera in which Madame commits suicide. Okay. Uh, Honor Man is a spicy, woody fragrance of classical compositions. The male version symbolizes the son of Madame Butterfly. Perfumer Nathalie Feisthauer composed it out of spicy notes of red and black pepper at the top. The heart of geranium, elemi, and nutmeg is placed on the intensive woody base of patchouli, cedar, vetiver, frankincense, musk, and tonka bean. So there's a little blurb from the brand. And um, so I basically read you most of the notes right there already. And... What's interesting about Honor when you first spray is to me, this is kind of like a reference black pepper fragrance. So it starts off with a huge hit of dry, spicy black pepper, okay? Um, and it is probably, and I and, and this is just fact, I'm not uh, saying this as a negative because I actually like Honor Man, but the reality of the situation, well, I guess it kind of is a negative, is I think this is the most uninspiring of the Amouage um, main line that, what, that, that, uh, got put out while Christopher Chong was a uh, creative director, okay? So many of Christopher Chong's works are extremely artistic, and they have a lot of moving parts, they transition a lot, you know, they do things and, and smell in a way that you've never smelled before. This is not that type of amouage. This is maybe the most mainstream amouage. Like I said, uninspired is a good word, but maybe um, not artistic, all right? So this is something that I think if you smelled from another brand, if you smelled it from Penhaligans in the Trades Roots collection, you'd probably just nod your head and go, yep, this is a Penhaligans. Um, it, it does kind of feel that way. And again, it doesn't mean it's a bad fragrance because I actually really rate Honor Man. I think it's probably the best black pepper scent out there, as I said. Um, and but I, but I did find it a little bit bland and a little bit generic for an amouage, if that makes sense. And I don't think Christopher Chong would disagree. Uh, my guess is he would probably completely agree with what I'm saying. Can't put words in his mouth, but uh, just from smelling the rest of the line, this really does stand out as very, um, I don't want to say designer, but um, like I said, it doesn't have the inspiration. It doesn't have that spark. It doesn't have that uh, sort of originality that many of his releases came with. When you smelled an amouage, it was like you're going on a journey. You know, you are smelling something you've never smelled before. One of the reasons I absolutely love the House of Amouage, while Christopher Chong was creative director, is they gave me fragrances to smell that I have never smelled before. You know, fragrances like Epic and Interlude Band and Jubilation and all of these 
releases. Um, Myths Man, and, you know, we're going to do a review of Beloved Man soon, Figment Man, you know, the list goes on. And then discovering the women's line, which was completely unexpected for me, how good the women's line of Amouage was under Christopher Chong's uh, direction as well. So this just never found its footing for me. Honor Man is kind of one of those that um, is the, the least artistic. Even though it's named after an opera, it's the least artistic of the line to me. And I think it's probably the reason, just speculation here, but it's probably the reason that Nathalie Feisthauer didn't come back and do a lot of work with Christopher Chong. You know, there's some perfumers who came back over and over and over again. Think of Pierre Negrin, right? He did things like Interlude Man. He did Portrayal Man. He did Opus 11. He, did, he worked on all of these different fragrances, Opus 6, Opus 7. Um, and he came back over and over and over. Um, or think of Karine Vinchon Spenner, who did Boundless and Memoir Man, which I have a review on the channel and Overture Man, and you know, which I have a review on the channel. So she came back over and over and over and over again to, to work with Christopher Chong. Um, and Nathalie Feistower did not. And maybe this is the reason why. Maybe they just did not see eye to eye or come together when they worked together originally in 2011. That's my guess, okay? But on the other side of the coin, in 2011, Christopher Chong was still kind of finding his legs. I really think when he left Amouage, in 2019 or whenever it was, um, that he was just hitting his stride. I really wish he would have stayed because um, I have a feeling that there would have been some amazing Amouage releases if they would have allowed him to continue, but they went in another direction. Uh, I think it was a huge error from the brand. I've said that many times before, but um, in 2011, he was still kind of finding his legs and you can tell he was working with different perfumers he never worked with before. Uh, I think Danielle Byzantine, uh, did Lyric, and there were, really wasn't anything else that was done by that perfumer, um, and, and, or maybe one or two other things, and, and that's pretty much it. Um, and, and so you can tell he was kind of really feeling out the landscape. He was, he was, um, very, he was very, um, patient, but very specific. And you can tell he, when he, when he found a perfumer that he really meshed with, they came back over and over again. Nathalie Feistower did not. So maybe that tells you a little something. And what's funny about this fragrance and just this scent in general is Nathalie Feistower has done a, perf a bunch of perfumes for the extremely expensive, maybe one of the most expensive houses I've ever come across. Uh, and it's a, it's a house that's called Amafi. And if you want to laugh, um, go watch my Amafi Intrigant review. Uh, Intrigant instantly reminded me of Honor Man instantly. And I have a review on the channel. Um, it, it, it's almost like a, it, like a luxury blob version of Honor Man. Shout out to the devil man for coining the term, uh, luxury blob and shout out to, uh, my man, uh, Mark from the robes OA channel. He basically perfectly summed up Honor Man to me. He said, black pepper is one of those notes that doesn't make me want to just pull out my wallet and start spending right? Especially in a niche fragrance that's $360 for 100 mils. Uh, and, and probably when he did his video, like a decade ago when this came out, because he's the true OG, you know, if you ever watch uh, any documentaries on YouTube fragrance reviews and they're like, oh, Jeremy founded YouTube fragrance reviews, bullshit. Uh, there are old timers who was doing this well, well before Jeremy stuck his nose in there. Um, he just kind of blew up for multiple reasons. But um, Robes did a video, Mark did a video, where he basically uh, said black pepper is one of those notes that just doesn't get a real frag head excited. And you know what? He's 100% spot on. And, and that being said, um, for me, this is one of those fragrances where if you came to me and you said, Ramsey, what is a reference black pepper fragrance? It would be Mark Jacobs Bang. This is like a designer uh, take on, on black pepper. Very well done. Okay. For a designer discontinued one bottle of the year for that almost like punched in bottle look kind of cool bang. Um, but to me, this is the black pepper fragrance for me, for, for, from what I have encountered in my journey, this is like the, uh, reference black pepper fragrance. You know, if I was going to write a book like Luca Turin and sometimes he'll write like he, you know, he won't even do a review of a fragrance. He'll just say reference Shifra, right. Or reference, um, uh, oriental or, you know, reference rose fragrance. This would be the reference black pepper fragrance. Um, and, and it's funny because like, uh, Mark was saying, 
that's not a note that usually excites a lot of people. But the reality is, is now, to be fair, I haven't smelled Comedy Garçons Black Pepper, which many people, I know someone's going to put that in the comments. What about Black Pepper? I haven't smelled it. I'm sorry. Uh, I haven't smelled a lot of those Comedy Garçons fragrances. So it's a house that I really do need to explore because I think I would like it. Uh, but, it, you know, there is a... Um, uh, there is a side of this fragrance when it kind of opens up, you get the hit of, you know, dry, spicy, almost tickle the nose, black pepper, right? Like you're just, someone's just putting black pepper on your salad right there in front of you, right in front of your nose. Uh, it's fresh black pepper and, but it's mixed with pink pepper. And I would consider this kind of a great example of, um, pink, pe of pink pepper working as a bridge between the, the top and the heart of the fragrance because the heart of the fragrance has this very um, rosy spicy geranium and pink pepper has this rosy tint to it normally right and yesterday I actually reviewed what I would consider almost like a reference pink pepper fragrance so if someone came to me and said Ramsey I want to explore the note of pink pepper which no one ever does that but let's say they do well Creed Viking which I reviewed yesterday on the channel is a perfect pink pepper fragrance per in my opinion uh, I think that's a reference, pink pepper, how to use that energetic, um, you know, it's a very, uh, it's a note that really pops. And I think that's why it's used so often. It's also relatively cheap from my, from my understanding. So is pepper. Black pepper is not an expensive note. You know, you start putting it up against things like um, ouds and real ambergris and, and those kind of notes. You start looking for the musk, real musks and stuff like that. And, um, you know, uh, black pepper is just not a note that's going to get a frag had to pull their wallet out and start making it rain. But, um, you know, the pink pepper adds a very interesting freshness to the fragrance, and it adds the bridge between the top and the heart. Uh, and that rosy mid uh, with that spicy, rosy smelling geranium. The geranium here is not green. It's more rosy. Uh, and um, there's a slightly generic woody undertone that basically hits the fragrance from the beginning. You know, from the time you spray, as soon as you get that burst of uh, black pepper, you're going to start, you're going to instantly start smelling that generic woody undertone, which they say is cedar. Um, it really smells like you're getting some sort of a generic woodiness here, a synthetic smelling woodiness. And um, that's one of the things that I did not like so much about the $4,000 Amafi, which interestingly enough, the reason I'm bringing this up, by the way, is this is also done by Nathalie Feisthauer, if I didn't say that. So not only did it instantly remind me of Honor, Honor Man, but I was like, wait a minute, Honor is also a Nathalie Feisthauer uh, fragrance, so it just kind of perfectly came together for me. I'm not saying they're clones, because this has that Oud note, which we talked about in the review, and it also has a um, $4,300 price tag, or whatever the hell it has on it. This is the, um, to be fair to Amafi, this is the travel size the 50 mil they give you for free somebody reached out to me and sent this to me for free you you also get like a 75 mil like deck, decked out it has like a big roja box that it sits in and all that stuff um but the fragrance is the same so i'm very grateful otherwise i'd never get to review it because they don't do samples and they do not accept return so how's that for a brand building trust uh and so at least that's my understanding of, of what the brand has has uh said on the website but um there, there was a generic woody undertone of in, intrigant, and there was also that generic woody undertone in Honor Man that I got. Um, and I just think, honestly, I think it's Nathalie Feisthauer's style. I think she has a very synthetic style. I think she would probably be a good perfumer for Comme des Garçons. Um, she has that synthetic, um, scratchy type style, and sometimes I like it. Um, and, and if you're watching this review and you've never smelled Honor Man, you're probably saying to yourself, okay, so what in the world do you like about Honor Man? Um, and the reality is the uh, thing that really makes Honor Man a like for me, it's not a love, but it is a like. Um, the thing that really makes it a like is there's this very bright, uh, fresh, lemony smelling elemy in its heart. So right in the center of the fragrance, there's this Madagascan elemy note. Um, and it really... Uh, balances out the darker, blacker, heavier, smokier smelling frankincense resins that are in the base of this fragrance. So the fragrance does a great job of kind of highlighting what the note of Elemy can do. This could also be a little bit of a reference Elemy fragrance. Uh, I actually prefer the Elemy and Beloved Man, which is um, on the list to, to review, as I said. 
Uh, Beloved Man is on the two review list for, for Amouage, and it just seems to never end. Figment Man's on the list. Beloved Man's on the list. Uh, it goes on and on and on. Dia Man's on the list. But, um, but LME is basically this um, more translucent and fresher take on the smoky frankincense note. And the uh, Fragrance Society describes LME as sharp and balsamic. Okay, so just imagine a sharp smelling note with that sharp pepper note on the nose, but there's a freshness to it. It's spicy, it's woody, it's resinous, it's all that stuff, but there is a freshness to the, to the LME. Elemi makes this fresh and it makes it very wearable in spring. There's a reason that I'm doing this fragrance review in March. It is March the 13th, okay? So we just did the spring ahead with the clocks. It officially feels like spring. You know, the birds are chirping when you go outside. You know, the grass is beginning to grow. The trees are beginning to bud. All of that good stuff, right? It really does feel like spring. And when there's a little bit of a freshness in the air, that's really when. They're, they're, most amouages, people think of these big, heavy oriental monsters. You know, they think of Interlude Man and stuff like that, the Blue Beast. Um, and they think about only wearing them in winter. They're winter fragrances to many people. I disagree. There's a lot of amouages that I think you could easily wear in the heat. Uh, and one of them is Honor Man. This is one that, you know, if I was going to make an amouage list to wear in the warmer weather, Honor Man would be it. And the reason that it works so well is because of that LME. The LME does a fantastic job. Also, nutmeg usually brightens a fragrance up. So the nutmeg here does feel like it brightens its fragrance up a little bit. Um, and, you know, if you sort of, um, if you wear the fragrance and you really get to know the fragrance, you will realize that she really did create something that feels thoughtful. It feels contrasted between the lighter LME, the darker frankincense, the woodiness, the spicy black pepper in your face. Um, and it really feels like she did a thoughtful and... Uh, experienced execution of this style, okay? Now, knowing Christopher Chong's work and kind of what ended up coming as down the pike as, as the, the releases uh, morphed and, and, and changed and really reflected his personality more, um, my guess is, is that, um, that this, uh, even though she did this in an experienced way, sort of the unartistic, uninspired, bland, somewhat generic smelling masculine woodiness here may have put him off a little bit. That's my guess. Uh, or maybe this was exactly what he wanted. I have no idea. There's no way to know. But um, it, it definitely feels like a little bit of an outlier in all of the Amouage's release. It feels like, like if I was going to rank the Amouage fragrances on artistic creation, creativity, just fragrances I've never smelled. Like I've never smelled anything like Interlude Man before, ever. When I smelled that, that completely blew my mind the first time. This would be right at the bottom of that list. It's the most uninspired. And obviously, in 2011, when you're making an Amouage, you know, Amouage back then was really known for their incense because Oman was known for their uh, white Omani frankincense, best in the world. Um, and, and so highlighting an incense note was obviously top of mind of many perfumers making an Amouage fragrance back then. She did it in, like I said, a very thoughtful and experienced way. So I have to hand it to her. Uh, and it definitely has to do with the difference between the light feeling of the LME. The LME somehow feels fresh. It feels lemony and it feels fresh and it feels, um, you know, it, 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 um, it's actually known as poor man's frankincense, which I disagree with because I really love a good LME note. Uh, it, it makes you feel when you're wearing this fragrance and the Elemy hits you in the mid, it really does give a different feeling. It gives a different vibe um, than when the smokier, heavier frankincense resins in the base really hit. The vetiver in the base is not as pronounced as in Beloved Man, which I said is on the, on the list to review soon. And so the fragrance is basically this blast of black pepper. The pink pepper works as a bridge to the mid. The freshness of the Madagascan Elemi sort of showing the brighter, fresher elements of, of that popular incense note. Um, while the woody cedar wood and patchouli and vetiver base kind of swirl around, that's the generic smelling part to me. The cedar is definitely most prominent, 100% most prominent. The um, patchouli, which is usually a very heavy note, and, and there are some people who really, really complain about 
uh, performance on this set. So if you read reviews online, you're going to read some people that say, oh, the performance on Honor Man is absolutely shit. I have never got that. Uh, and I'm curious because, you know, my bottle, these do come from an older batch. I don't know exactly how old, but definitely an older batch. Um, and so I don't know if this is an issue of reformulation. I have no clue because I've never smelled the new bottles with the name on the front. Um, but the patchouli, the vetiver, the, the notes in the base that you would think, you know, the tonka bean absolute, the musk that you would think kind of weigh the fragrance down does wear a little lighter. But that's why I think it's perfect for spring. The frankincense is black and heavy and smoky in the base, the resins. Um, but the fragrance doesn't wear like a huge oriental amouage, you know, like an old school interlude man style amouage. It doesn't wear that way. Um, and so the other positive that some folks point out that I have to mention, and it's true, is that this wears like a masculine, like a vintage old school masculine fragrance. So for example, you know, if you like Gucci Porom from 2003, that heavy woody, you know, cedar with smoke and, and that style, it would be an easy leap to jump to something to Honor Man. Easy leap, okay? It's not a one-to-one -one comparison at all. If you want something much closer, go to... Um, Parlement de Parfums, uh, um, I always forget the name of it, Papyrus Oud. Uh, that's apparently a uh, take on Gucci Porom from 2003. I also talked about Bentley for Men, Absolute, I believe it was. Uh, that is also, Parfumo says it's discontinued. Some folks left me a comment saying, good news, it's not discontinued. I, I have no clue. But, um, but rumor is, Parfumo says it's discontinued, so we'll go with it being discontinued. But where I'm going with this is, you know, one of the things that I really like about Gucci Porom is that, you know, being in a wood cabin or whatever you want to call it, right? Um, that, uh, that woodiness without the modern bubblegum sweetness, okay? So even though this smells synthetic, and it does, you know, I can't get around that. Um, even though it smells synthetic, it doesn't, you have to hand it to Amouage and Nathalie Feisthauer for a couple of things. Number one, they didn't use those modern bubblegum, uh, girly, sweet, vanillic, things, you know, sparkly candy smells, which I despise. They didn't do the Baccarat Rouge 540 thing, which I hate. Uh, the candy floss thing, I can't stand it. With the ethyl maltol, I just can't. Um, and, and, and so it's a, a fragrance that doesn't have the modern sweetness. It wears like a vintage masculine. It has very nice incense notes in here between the interplay of the lighter LME and the darker frankincense. So it has positives. Um, and the other thing is the nutmeg here is an important part of the set. I mentioned that it really brightens the fragrance up, but it also wears very bitter. The nutmeg in here smells like a very bitter spice, like an angry nutmeg to mix with the black pepper. Uh, and maybe that has to do with the whole um, Madame Butterfly thing, which I know nothing about. But um, the downside, the generic woodiness, there's no getting around that. The generic woodiness, the uninspired, unartistic smelling amouage, would you just expect much more from an amouage? Um, the least amouage, amouage Christopher Chong ever put out, in my opinion. Still a good fragrance. Um, definitely still a good fragrance. And you can see I wear it by choice. I also wear it because I wanted to review it for you guys today. But I will reach for this by choice, especially in, in these months. Like March and April, prime honor man months for me. This is when I kind of crave this sort of DNA. There's just something about that freshness of the LME that does it for me. Um, and But like I said, you're not going to get the daring Christopher Chong experience here. Uh, and, and to be honest, part of me is a little shocked that it hasn't been axed yet. They put it in the new packaging, which I'm shocked. I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised this lasted, but then again, I got to really thinking about it and I was thinking, you know, the fragrances that are getting axed, stuff like Mitz Man, which I reviewed on the channel within the last couple months, the more artistic stuff from, uh, the library collection is getting axed. So really thinking about it and the fact that this is the more designer smelling amouage, if you will. That's not really fair to this fragrance, but that's an easy way to describe it to you guys if you've never smelled it before. Um, it's actually not surprising that it has not been axed yet because of the path that amouage is taking now. Amouage is trying to become more mainstream. They're focusing on sales. They're getting rid of what some people call museum pieces that are hard to wear and stuff like that. Um, so when I went back and really thought of, when I first saw it, it was actually in the new packaging. I was like, wow. Shocking, like I was expecting this to be axed, you know, old Christopher Chong work, axed by the fish man. But um, actually, it seems like the more artistic ones are the targets. So Figment is, I would guess Figment and Journey are probably the next to go. 
Um, although Journey is much more wearable than it seems on the surface. I think Figment's probably the next to go. Um, so anyways, but there will be more Amouage reviews on the channel. I'm still working on Figment and Beloved, which is right, well, you can't see it, but it's right here. Um, so Beloved and Figment Man are being worked on right now. Um, so there will be more Amouage reviews to come. If you have experience with Honor Man, do let me know. Um, and if by any chance you happen to smell some of these other sort of comparisons, which I talked about today, completely different fragrances, obviously. Same perfumer on Amafi's Intricate, but um, much more in that luxury blob, as if Roja took a niche fragrance already and tried to really Roja it up even more. That's kind of what it wears like to me. But, um, but yes, uh, very interesting stuff. Glad I got to do the review for you guys. Glad that I have enough samples in here where I don't have to run out and go buy a bottle because I don't think I really, you know, I'm glad to have it. I'm glad to have the juice. I don't think I need a bottle of Honor Man though. I'm happy wearing it once a year, twice a year, and, and that's good enough for me. So anyways, that's my take on Honor. Let me know your thoughts. Love to see your faces in the comments. Thanks for the support, everyone. Cheers, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.